Free in charge of the action, Mike Ortega. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on the line, the vacant NABC title, 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, official weight, 226 and one half pounds. Professional record, 41 victories, including 24 knockouts with three defeats and two bouts even. From Cincinnati, Ohio, the former NABO and WBC America's champion, Larry the Legend Donald. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple, official weight, 215 and one half pounds. Professional record, 38 victories, including 25 knockouts with seven defeats and two draws. From Atlanta, Georgia, presenting the four-time heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Real I, I, I want everybody out the ring. Guys, just a chief second. Just a chief second, please. Just a chief second. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules. Want a good, clean fight? Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch him up, good luck to both of you. Evander Holyfield said he would retire if he ever was beaten up. James Tony beat him up. Here he is. Got to respect the heart. Over the course of the past seven years, Evander Holyfield has a questionable win over Vaughn Bean, a loss and a draw with Lennox Lewis, a loss, a draw, and one win against John Ruiz. A technical win against Hasim Rahman. A decision loss to Chris Bird. A knockout loss to James Tony, And he's still even money in this fight against Larry Donald, who's 41 and 3. Because he never stops. He will not give up. You're going to have to beat him if you beat him. Finally, the opening round bell. And Evander Holyfield told us in the meeting yesterday that he wanted to make an impression in the first couple of rounds. Show some fire, show some speed, and try to back Donald off of it. Back. Step back clean. Box. For his part, Larry Donald said, I just have to box. I have to stay within my envelope, box as well as I know how to box, and I ought to be able to outbox Evan. It won't be quite that easy, I don't think, but uh, at least he does seem to be content to fight tonight. Yeah, it, it, no, 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 no. Donald has had some moments, and that's a slip, not a knockdown. Donald has had some moments where he looked timid in there, but this first round isn't one of them so far. He looks like he's coming to fight for real tonight. Combination by Donald, finished with a pretty good left hook. Sticks the jab back into Holyfield's face twice. Holyfield lunging in to get to Donald's body. Keep your punches in front. Keep them in front. At his height, Evander Holyfield would duck or slip your first punch and then hit you back twice. Now, too often, he takes that first punch. Yeah, he does, but that's what happens when you're getting a little bit older. He looks good for his age right here tonight. Pretty energetic first two minutes of the fight. For both Fight. fighters. Fight. Fight. Left hook to the chest by Holyfield, back Donald up. And Donald catches Holyfield with the left coming in. 
Darnold standing his ground, which he usually doesn't do. Throwing right hands, which he is usually reluctant to do. Tells you what he thinks of Holyfield tonight. And so far, Holyfield hasn't been able to make him pay a price for it in any way. Hard right hand by Larry Donald, and now he ties Holyfield up as Evander leans in. Donald for the moment, beating Holyfield to the punch, fighting the fight he would like to fight. So much. Okay, when they get inside, I start working a little bit more on the inside, okay? Look, as soon as you get inside, let him hold you. Right here, you see Donald start with his left jab and bring a right hand straight behind it. Holyfield wasn't looking for the right hand off of the jab by Donald. That was a good one two combination. Statistically, a good round for Larry Donald. CompuBox numbers find him 14 out of 57, including 7 out of 19 power shots. Uh, Holyfield 11 out of 37 for himself, but eight of those lands were jabs in the wake of the loss to James Tony Evander Holyfield is without longtime trainer Don Turner Turner said for his part he felt that Evander should hang him up Evander said if you don't have confidence in me I need another trainer and he's got Ronnie Shields who worked with him way back at the beginning of his career in tandem with George Benton and Lou Duva manager Jim Thomas has gone too this is one thing that happens to older fighters, Roy Jones. The yeah. people around you start to vacate. Yeah, sometimes those people don't understand what your motives are. And it's not for them to understand because it's your life and you're the one out there. And Evander has done so much for this game that I would be the last person to tell him he should quit. <laughs> yeah, but they're the first people who are supposed to tell the fighter when to quit. And, of course, uh, he considered that negative and got rid of them. Thanks, the fat queen. You can't pull in two directions at the same time and go anywhere. <laughs> it's kind of interesting that Larry Donald now has a, uh, what appears to be a yellow piece of gaffer's tape on his back. In the middle of the back. About the same spot where there was a box on the back of one of the presidential, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's over with, isn't it? Yeah, that's over with. <laughs> Maybe somebody telling him in there to throw the right hand. Exactly. <laughs> Lead with your left, then follow with the right. And one thing we can't forget here either, although uh, Evander is 42, Larry is 37. 37 is not young either. Yeah, but if you look at the heavyweight division, it's sort of the new 28. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's fond of saying 30 is the new 25. In the heavyweight division, maybe 35 is the new 25. I mean, Cali Meehan is 34, and he's regarded as a prospect here. <laughs> You're right. And Donald doesn't look 37 out here. Not the way he's fighting right now. But this could change. Hey. Question might be, though, if the rhythm of the fight goes Donald's way and he remains confident in his boxing, what adjustment hey. could Evander make? Well, Evander would just have to keep trying to put the pressure on him. And might have to pay some some price to do it. Well, he's doing that anyway, so why not? <laughs> yeah, but he wants to counter punch. He indicated, and uh, but Larry Donald is just beating him to the punch so much he can't counter. So far, it's working perfectly for Donald. Boxing behind his jab, throwing the right hand freely, and keeping Holyfield at the end of his stick. Mark your calendars for these upcoming boxing telecast next Saturday night, November 20, World Championship Boxing returns as Winky Wright and Shane Mosley square off in the rematch of their fight last March when Winky won the 154-pound title after his long, long search. 
November 27, HBO pay-per-view brings you Eric Morales versus Marco Antonio Barrera for the third time. Each has won once in classic fights. Here comes the rubber match. December 4, middleweight rising star Jermaine Taylor takes on former 160-pound titleist William Joppy on Boxing After Dark. December 11 on HBO pay-per-view, Vitaly Klitschko puts his heavyweight title on the line against Englishman Danny Williams, who recently knocked out Mike Tyson. And December 18, live on HBO, it's Antonio Tarver taking on Glenn Johnson in a matchup of the two fighters who have scored knockout wins over Roy Jones this year, that for the light heavyweight championship of the world. Total in round two, Holyfield dropping to only 25 punches thrown. Donald about the same numbers as in round one, 14 out of 53. Good hook by Good Bender. hook. Very good hook by Bender. He gambled in, which is what, he, what he's going to have to do more of if he's expecting to win this fight. And that, that time he managed to beat Donald to a punch, and he lands a huge right hand and a big left hook, and Donald momentarily stunned, I think, by the right. And now Larry comes back, showing some grit. He's not backing off like he normally would. I think Larry Donald understands now that this is um, his his last hurrah too, and an opportunity uh, to make some kind of a statement, even if it's against uh, an old lion in the in the winter of his career. Keeps getting off first like that, he's gonna stay ahead of Evander. But he can't afford to keep gambling with Evander like that. Uh, there's Holyfield again trying to counter, as you saw there, and maybe he's getting just a little quicker at countering Donald's lead. Yeah, he's kept, he's starting to time Donald's punch some more. Excellent jab by Larry. Ever since Holyfield's fight with Michael Moore in 1984, you've seen this pattern. 20 or 25 seconds of aggressive activity and effective punching followed by a long lull. It happens over and over, despite the apparent brilliant conditioning of the 42-year-old fighters. You meant 94, Jim. Just a little bit of an edit there. shot by Holyfield. A little bit better round for Evander here, particularly with the good start. Don't grab behind the neck. Don't grab. Good right hand counter by Larry Donald. There's that one-two again. Donald is not varying from his pattern of showing the nerve, the will, and the courage to stand in and fight with Evander Holyfield and using his boxing skills. Hey! Step back, please. Step back. Step back. Step back. Step back. There are 48 scheduled rounds of fights here tonight. We got the first three in the books. You might see 45 more. You understand me? Now listen, you have to jump right on top of this man. This man can't be, I'm telling you, you can hurt this man. You understand? But you're sitting there, you're waiting on one shot. We, we're not in his, we didn't train to wait on one shot. Right. Okay? We trained to take the lead on this man. You understand? Just shoot your right hand and your left one. Just keep going around. Be first, right? Be first. Go to be first. Here you go, here you go, here you go. Best jab in the fifth. Three. Okay, you're doing good, but you just got to lay arms move a little more. I got my chest, man. Just hit him a little more, right? Bang, 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 a little more. Pick it up a little bit now. Stop picking it up, all right? And as the rungs go, we keep picking it up. Come on, let's go. Larry Donald is being trained for the first time tonight by a trainer named Colin Morgan. Colin Morgan also works with a heavy heavyweight named Wayne Llewellyn. He says that he has focused on improving Larry Donald's speed and quickness, but obviously he's also helped him to achieve a pretty good plan for what to do 
in this fight. More on Holyfield's trainer, Ronnie Shields, in a moment. Meanwhile, Harold, how do you have it scored through three? Okay, Jim. Yeah, I'll tell you something. I don't know how you can score a hey, fight for a guy that just doesn't back. get off. Oh. And Evander Holyfield on my scorecard hasn't pulled the trigger. He just doesn't let go of enough punches. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Larry Donald. He, he's just jamming him to death, dropping the right hand, and snapping his head back with that good left jab. And yeah, it was a good left hand by Holyfield that backed Donald off. What Holyfield gets done, he's mostly doing one punch at a time. Donald far more frequently has landed effective combinations. Don't hold him behind the head. Watch your head coming in. For his part, Ronnie Shields taking over for Evander Holyfield as trainer told us that he feels like Evander hasn't done the right kind of the work in the gym for several years. Holyfield said that he had, in some instances, sparred only 10 or 15 rounds to get ready for fights. Apparently, previous trainer Don Turner felt it was best to avoid wear and tear. Shields' point is, if you're going to fight, you can't baby yourself in the gym. And he had Holyfield train far harder, sparring 50-plus rounds for this fight. Your thoughts, Roy? Well, I can understand why Don Turner would back off from Holyfield a little bit because Holyfield is a little older. And as you see, Holyfield's body starting to wear right now in this fight. And if Larry can keep this pressure up, it will wear on him. So I understand Don Turner's point, but I also understand that you can't baby yourself. And maybe he should do other things for his conditioning because you never saw Holyfield go down to a body shot before until his last fight. James Tony. And right now, Holyfield is starting to look 44 years old. Absolutely. He, he appears to be slowing down again here in the fourth round. And... Donald's confidence, so often non-existent, appears to be surging here. And not to say that Evander is not one of the best at playing possum now, because he is. But Donald is doing a smart right. thing by going to the body, because when you fight an older fighter, you automatically know you want to go to his body to try to drain him. shot by Evander. Right hand lead to the stomach. So far as uh, Muhammad Ali used to say, the coffee is old and cold. Can Evander Holyfield heat it up? In our next fight, the enigmatic Hasim Rahman, who also has a new trainer, as usual. Uh, we'll be fighting against emerging New Zealander Callie Meehan. Meehan lives in Australia, originally from New Zealand. He has a uh, Fijian mother uh, and emerged in a showcase against Lehman Brewster a few months back, a fight that Brewster won while hanging on for dear life. Rockman. Probably has worked harder in the 30 seconds you've watched him here than was the case in months of preparation for some of his fights. By his own admission. And his trainer is Thel Torrance, the ultra quiet, ultra civilized, ultra gentlemanly Thel Torrance. I mean, Thel Torrance knows a ton of boxing. He worked with Eddie Futch. To wonder how such a non demonstrative man can push a guy who needs pushing in Rockman. It'll be interesting to see. Round five begins between Larry Donald and Evander Holyfield. Donald with a right hand, trying to put Holyfield back in a discouraged move. Holyfield looking to land one punch that can make a difference in the fight. But he, but he was never a one-punch puncher, Roy. No, he wasn't, but at his age, you have to remember now, he's not going to outbox many guys now. He's not going to throw more punches than the younger guys too much now. So he has to gamble and go for knockouts. Good luck. He hasn't had a legitimate knockout since his knockout of Michael Moore seven years ago. The only fight in the seven intervening years that's been stopped in his favor short of the distance was the technical win over Rachman when Rachman's head swelled up like a basketball. Not that I'm saying that's the right thing to do. I'm no. just saying that's all he has no, to I understand. right now. It's just an insight into the fantasy <laughs> land in which he currently is living. Exactly. And I wouldn't call it fantasy because if he has the heart and the will, and you know he's a very spiritual and very faithful man, 
There is, where there's a will, there is a way. All right, I think the notion that he's going to knock out good heavyweights at this point may turn out to be a fantasy. Yeah, but I think if he was going to fight for the title, I wouldn't fight Larry Donald. I would have fought my, uh, Chris Bird first. Well, he's he fought already... Chris Bird in Atlantic City and got beat. Well, I mean, he got beat, but now at least he knows how to go back and regroup. That's a good point. And the, the Chris Bird that he'd be fighting now might have significantly less movement and, has, and reflexes than the one of two and a half years ago. Has slowed a lot himself, so. Yeah. He might beat Holyfield 12 rounds out of 12 <laughs> next time instead of 10. That was a good right hand by Evander. One punch at a time. Again, Donald's advantage in the fight so far is that he's been able to land combinations from time to time. And we know Donald as a boxer, so if you're Evander Holyfield, you're not going to try to outbox the boxer. You're going to try to knock him out or discourage him. Well, if that's the case, then it's probably better for Evander that Donald is fighting aggressively and standing in. It is. And that's creating Evander, opportunities. That's what Evander needs. That's his only chance. If Donald was to box him and move around, see like that right there. That shot can knock, you, knock Donald down in a couple more rounds if he continues to, to hit him with it. If he continues to hit him with that. And he might. This goes to the point you made before the fight when you said Evander will be explosive. Oh, he's going to be explosive in every fight you see him in. Whether it be for two seconds or 25 seconds, he's going to be explosive. Even when he's fighting in the Masters division past age 50? Yes, because he is the real deal. <laughs> he didn't earn that name. Nobody gave him that name. He earned that. Absolutely. <laughs> no. If you stay busy with this man, I promise you, you will knock this guy out. You understand? But you got to stay busy with this man. You're giving this man too much confidence. You understand this man's confidence is sky high. But you're sitting there, you're waiting on one shot. One shot is not going to beat this guy. You understand? Yeah. Jab him in the chest. Keep jabbing him in the chest. You throw coming, then you get. Okay? Good. Cool. You know what you do? I'm cool. Good. You know what you do? You know what you do? He getting soft, Larry. You feel it? You out here. You know what you do? Keep doing what you do. Just why you keep your hands going. Don't go to sleep and wait for him to do anything. If you're doing you just keep doing it. As long as you're working and you're hitting him, keep hitting him. Don't stop and wait for him to, to, to try to hit you, all right? Come on. Pick it up this round. More punches okay. this round. I guarantee you that what Holyfield is thinking right now is, I've got Donald where I want him. I guarantee he is, too. He's getting cocky. He's there for me to hit. I'm going to get him. Combi box numbers weigh heavily in Donald's favor so far. Holyfield's only averaging nine power shots thrown per round, only throwing 25 total punches per round. Larry Donald is averaging 27 power shots thrown per round. In other words, he throws more power shots than Holyfield does punches, and Holyfield's mostly thrown jabs. So that's part of why Ronnie Shields was yelling, be busier, throw more punches, put more pressure on him. Yep, and as you see right here, he's not going to outbox Donald. Because Donald has the quicker hands. He has the outside range. box. Yes, exactly. Final yeah. shot by Donald drives Holyfield into the ropes. He hits him with a right hand as well. And another left to the body. Good flurry by Larry Donald. And this is part of the reason that Shields was screaming at Evander not to give Donald so much confidence. Yeah, but Donald's waiting, and he's giving Evander confidence by waiting because he lets Evander recuperate. And Evander's going to set one of those traps that's going to be deadly for him if you don't watch it. Yeah, you could almost feel Donald as he evaluated what had happened in that flurry against the ropes and then just thought to himself, well, I'll leave well enough alone right now. You can't do that with Evander. <laughs> Another good left hand inside by Donald as Vander was starting to come in. Larry Donald is letting his hands go tonight. Hey, one more. That hasn't always been the case. Nope, you have to give him credit. He's making an improvement.
McDonald paints Holyfield with a straight right hand lead. Yeah, that's there for him all night because he bent his hands a little low, and Donald's taller and he has quicker hands than Holyfield. Well, and when he lets a straight right hand lead go like that, he's saying to Holyfield, I'm not even worried about your counter left hook anymore. No. <laughs> And if you're not worried about Evander Holyfield's counter left hook, you're just not worried about it, frankly. Now, that might be the smartest idea, but right now, Donald is feeling his oats. Right. And Holyfield goes back to his corner very slowly. Digging yourself a big hole, baby. You're gonna dug yourself a big old hole now, you understand me? Listen, come on, now look. Now you gotta go for it. You understand? We cannot wait on this man anymore. It's your choice, man. You're up near your face. You're gonna end up getting a swelling. Stay away from that. Stay on the outside, all right? <laughs> okay? Right here, you see the advantage he has, Donald has with the quick hands. He's killing him with a jab. He's doing what you call pop shot. And he's not getting too many shots, just one or two here and there. Throwing the quick hands, quick right hand leads. Coming back with a left hook and a, an occasional right hand after the uppercut or the hook. But the jab and the straight right lead is really what's doing the damage to you back there. Oh. <laughs> Donald Hands looks deep. more relaxed and confident right now than he did in the fighter meeting yesterday. <laughs> and there was nobody in our group who was going to hit him. Now Evander's wearing the same yellow tape. In round six. Evander Holyfield only threw 14 punches and only landed three, and Larry Donald was 20 out of 48. That was a mismatch round. Harold, how do you have it so far? Okay, Jim. Six to nothing. 60 to 54. Larry Donald. Jim, I got to tell you something. In round six, Larry Donald started to put two and three punch combinations together, just as Ray Jones said. I mean, it's not only one punch. It's a left jab, a right hand, and followed by a left hook. I mean, the guy is just doing all the fighting. Evander Holyfield still not getting up. Holyfield lunges in and lands one right hand. Busted the sweat off of Donald's head. And now another right hand over the top. And, and suddenly he found something with that looping right hand. And it don't take many of those to chop a tree down. Nope. <laughs> but now he's tired. This is when Donald has to attack. So Holyfield twice threw the punch that Vaughn Bean used to bedevil him. Yes. That overhand right. It's but now, sneaky. But now he's tired. Took a lot out of the See, he's trying to get rest now. And... Donald's smart because he's not letting Evander risk. Well, I think part of their plan was they know that Holyfield only fights a space. limited amount of time and to make him fight when he doesn't want to fight. By Evander. Those are the chaps that I'm talking about him sitting. He's had a couple of moments in this round. Yeah, but you know, Roy, he compares himself to George Foreman, who was 42 when Holyfield fought him. But George Foreman had the hammer. He had the big punch that he could set a trap, that he could hurt a guy like, like a Donald. And Evander just, I mean, his style all those years was simply to overwhelm his opponents. To outwork them. And outwork them. Yeah. And that's what the problem with this age. When you battle against age, it's harder to outwork them. Porter also had that steel cage defense and an ultra-relaxed style that meant that when he sought rest in the ring, he was actually resting, you know? <laughs> yep. It's more difficult for other fighters. Yes, it is. Come on, let's go. Step back. Foreman's punch is about as big as Evander's heart. And both of those are World tremendous. Class. Yes. World class. Yes. Yeah. But even despite the great heart and everything that Evander has meant and accomplished, and I mentioned he might be called the most significant fighter of the last 20 years, the way he supported the sport, could there be a single soul out there in our audience tonight who's saying, yeah, this is a good idea. He should keep fighting until he wins all the belts. You know what I mean? No, nah, it's just hard so. to fathom. Yeah, it's hard to fathom. And me being a boxer, right. you know, I'm the last one to say it, but I really don't like seeing him in here. Yeah, it sounds delusional. Come on, this boy. Wait, watch it. All right? He ain't doing nothing. He's waiting on you. And you just waiting. No way. Just beat him, man. Okay. He ain't doing nothing. Just keep bang, bang. 
Just turn him, turn him. Don't get no clinch. You need a clinch with this guy. All right? Just beat him up. Beat yeah, when you get close, just okay. let both hands go. You understand? The guy, you think he's brave now. You understand? Now you can hit him. But you got to step behind the jab. When you get close, let both hands go with the man. Okay? Whatever, whatever body, Come on, you got to work to overcome it. Come on, man. You got to work that your man? whole life. Work to overcome it. Work to overcome it. Let's go. Work, Cody. You got to Well, you saw the CompuBox number profile that showed how many more punches Larry Donald is throwing than Evander Holyfield and how Holyfield's punch output has declined over the course of the fight. And now ring doctors are standing in Holyfield's corner and watching carefully between rounds, even though Evander doesn't seem badly hurt. And my thing, he's not badly hurt. And my thing is, even if he came back and won this fight by knockout, still, to go through what he has to go through here, I don't like it for Evander because he's been too good to the sport to let the sport abuse him at the end. And it's humiliating. I mean, it's just humiliating to see a guy who was so great, who achieved so far beyond what anybody predicted for him in the sport when he came out of the Olympics in 1984, putting himself through this. Yeah, but you can't say it's humiliating, Jim, because that same heart that he used to astonish us all these years is why he's still in there. It's still just it's another uh, implication of the heart Evander Holyfield has. Yeah. He couldn't go out any other way. Exactly. And you can't get mad at him for that. Same right hand over and over and over again tonight. That's when you know it's about time to close shot. Watch your head, come in here, watch your head. He doesn't even care about the right hand anymore. Good I remember shot, in 1977 though. watching Larry Holmes badly beat up Muhammad Ali and thinking, this is the end of my youth. Well, Somewhere tonight, there's a kid who's been watching Evander Holyfield for 20 years. Well, most of the great His heart hurts. Most of the great heavyweight champions have gone out this way. Yep. Ali. Losing to Trevor Burbick, Larry Holmes fighting until the age of Viagra, and on and on back through history, Joe Lewis, uh, and so on. Understand, though, it's the heart that makes us know and love these people. That's what brings them back in the ring at these ages. You're, you're, you're exactly right, Roy. But there's something else, too. I mean, some of them love the competition and being on stage, and for others, it's the money, whether they need it or whether they want more of it. Right. You know, as Ali once said, nobody tells David Rockefeller to stop wanting to make more money. Nope. <laughs> What's Viagra? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Round eight coming to a close, and fight hasn't changed. Get off his neck. Get off his neck. Fight! Hey. Step back. Step back. If you beat consistent for one wrong straight, this fight gonna be over. He ain't doing nothing, you just beat him up. But you let him catch, you know, you, you take you let him take a break. Don't take a break. Just push it for one wrong, son. You can't do that? How you tired? You're not tired, right? You're in great shape. So push it for one wrong. Just keep just keep banging it for one wrong. Open one is open the bottle, open the water, open the water. Suck it up. Now, you understand? You gotta go to work. Okay, now you know this, right? Okay, look. If Anders keeps the jab in the chest, stepping up, stepping up, and when you get close, fire the punches. Let both hands go. Okay? You did it in the gym. You got to do it here now. Okay? Throw this your is where it's at. Throw your combinations. Come on, baby, let's go. You got to go to work now. Come Nothing on. but combinations. Give me a deep breath. Come on, baby. Double jabs. I've always worked for you. Double Don't jabs. Come on back. Cut man Jimmy Strickland, conditioning coach Tim Hallmark. Trainer Ronnie Shields, all trying to get in a word or two to encourage the aging warrior. Holyfield threw 15 punches in the eighth round. Larry Donald threw 59. Donald landed 29 to 5 for Evander. It is becoming a mismatch. 
Yep. And they have to remember, this ain't the same young Holyfield that they used to train. Larry Donald. And he's beating Evander Holyfield up right now. Good body shot by Holyfield. One punch. The request for combinations probably won't be answered tonight. Maybe the worst thing that could happen to Holyfield is for somehow to have him pull this fight out and have him fight on for another two or three years. <laughs> Uh, I think it was a loss of balance, but even that is a sign of, of his losing out, the spring in his oh, let him out. Don't legs. Let him go. Like I said, back in round three, he's starting to look his age tonight. He's been looking his age, his age for a long time, Roy. Right? And tomorrow he'll be older. <laughs> Still got to admire the heart, though, because he's not giving up. There are a lot of fighters who lay down, who give up, and he's not doing either of the two, so he's still going to always be a warrior in my book. He'll always have that, and, and he'll never be anything but totally admired for it. It's his wisdom that's at stake right now. Yep. Shot by Evander. Hard right hand to the yeah. body, backs Donald up. And also the head, actually. Right. And Donald's mind changes for a moment as a result yeah, of that butt. Right hand. And that'll keep Evander going. That's like the one great five iron that you hit in the horrible round. <laughs> and let's go to Cali Meehan's dressing room to take a look at the fighter who will be fighting Hasim Rahman in our next fight. He's big. 6'5", 240 or so. Laboring in the vineyards for many years in Australia and New Zealand. You'd call him a journeyman, right, cool. except that the journey from Surfer's Paradise to Sydney is about as far as he's gone. You need a knockout, you gotta knock this man out. But you can't do it with one punch. You gotta step in behind your jab. Okay? Get up close and walk that jab. And just let both hands go. You don't have time to do it. When you're in close in the pinch, push him down. Deep breath. He's even to do his favorite thing, which is come off of your right hand and counter with overhand, right? That's one of his favorite all-time career moves. And just landing that one big punch makes Evander still still think that he think that he has a chance to win this fight. Trust me. Now you sat down and dined with Evander two or three times talking to him about whether the two of you should fight, right? Right, right. But it never came up, huh? No, because it really didn't. He didn't want to do it then. And then once he decided he wanted to do it, at that point, he was at the end of his career. I don't want to be out there like Larry because I didn't need that at the time to help boost my career. So I'm like, no, I'm not going to fall. He hurt Larry. He hurt Larry. That's what I'm talking about. Right hand over the top. Yes, I he hurt hold Larry bad. That's why I mean when I said his only chance is to gamble. That was a shot that hurt Larry. And that's why he thinks he has a chance to win the fight. Larry's still hurt. And one more good overhand right, and Larry will go down. Let's see what Holyfield has left now after having created an opportunity for himself in the 10th round. He hurt Donald with the right hand at the end of the last round and now has done it again in the first 30 seconds of the 10th. <laughs> Left hand lands for Holyfield. Crowd chanting, holy, holy, holy. Trying to bring back one more great moment from the fan favorite fighter. And that's why he believes in those one punches, because he knows that that could end it.
Well, it's virtually inconceivable that anything other than a knockout would win for Holyfield now. And that's why he's not trying for nothing other than a knockout. He wasn't trying for nothing but a knockout from round one. If you look at it from the way we look at it as a fighter, you know Holyfield is not going to outbox Larry Donald. So he shouldn't come in here to try to outbox him, and he didn't. And you got to credit him for this. Now Donald begins to reassert his technical mastery. And Holyfield, as has been the case, for several years, stops throwing after the two big flurries. Three times in his career, Vander Holyfield has knocked out opponents in the 10th or 11th round. That was after beating him up for eight or nine rounds. And Jim, I really don't want to say this because I really love Holyfield, to be honest with you. I don't want to see him stop, but one good body shot would end the fight here against Holyfield. Come out, let's go. Because he's dead tired. Donald was effective throwing to the body in the early rounds. Since then, he's focused mostly on his jab and his right hand. It's been easy enough to hit Holyfield upstairs that he's Pretty much forgotten the body attack. And throughout his career, he's been a predominantly hit puncher. As frankly, most fighters are. Two rounds now. That's it's mostly the good ones. Yeah. The, the Come body. On. Come on, get the arms down. Like get me, that's why my album is called A Body Head Bangers Listen, Volume you One. You have, to, you have <laughs> to knock him out. You hurt this man every time you throw a combination, you hit him and you hurt him. But then you quit. You got to stay up close. You got to keep jabbing him in the chest. How you feeling, Andrew? Lift your left hand. Oh. You understand? Mm -hmm. Come on, listen to me. Come on, baby, you gotta go to work now. You understand? Come on now. Look, you, every time you hit this man, you hurt him, you understand? But you gotta stay busy. You gotta back him okay. up. Back him up with the jam, you understand? Then you better let both hands go to the right hand. The hook gotta follow the right hand. Here you see the overhand right by Evander Holyfield. Caught Larry standing there, frozen with a feint with the left hand, and came over the top with an overhand right, and then almost put put uh, Larry Donald on his back. to the layman, Roy, that a feint like that will freeze a fighter long enough to land a punch that comes all the way over in that big an arc. Those feints are deadly. You get a guy used to feinting him and, he, and he, he thinks you're not gonna do nothing, then all of a sudden you do something, he's still there thinking he wasn't gonna do anything. And there's that right hand again by Larry Donald. Larry Donald could uh, dance the last two rounds away if he wanted and win this fight easily, but he had a plan, he stuck to it, He's sticking to it. Larry Donald's new trainer has done good work with the Cincinnati fighter. Very this will rank work. among the best 12 rounds he's ever put together. Good jab by Larry. Oh, good right hand by Larry. That hurt and a field. Solid right hand to follow up as well. My gosh. Holyfield's big moments came at the end of the ninth and the beginning of the tenth. The eleventh is another round that is all Donald so far. Hey! Get back, get back, please. Get back. Probably can't knock Evander Holyfield out going exclusively to the head. I don't care how many times you hit him. <laughs> That's why Tony mixed in the body attack so freely. Off 
push him. Don't push him. Hope Larry doesn't get too overconfident here walking to one of those bombs. Break, step back, step back. You think he still has enough left well, to, do, he, to do serious damage? Yeah, he has enough. He just did serious damage last round. Watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head. If you were in Donald's corner, would you tell him to go out and fight the 12th exactly the same way he's fought the first 11? If you work for 11 rounds, why not continue the 12th? Hey, let him out. Step back Let's go. Relax. Like to prevent defense in football, sometimes when you try to stay away, that's when you get in trouble. Yep. Cruise away came up and stopped this guy. He just can't do nothing. Why are you waiting? He's a heavyweight. Take this guy hard, man. Bang him. Take him out. I'll let you hear that your hands go. You have to keep stepping with the jab. Do you still believe you can win this fight? Yes. You yes. believe it? Yes. You gonna throw punches yes. this round for me? You gotta okay. throw combinations. Oh, yeah. One punch will come in combination. Good, good stiff jab. You gotta, you got the gap. You know what I mean? Take it on. Come on. Come on. I mean, you gotta get a good finish. You got more energy All than right. you have. Take it home. Come on. Back up with him, Holy. You gotta stay right there. You cannot back up from this man. Put your hands you up and your hands go. You this is it. Holy, this is it. This is it right here. Ronnie Shields asked Evander Holyfield if he still believed he could win the fight, and it was hard to tell whether Holyfield put all of his massive heart behind the obligatory yes answer. <laughs> right, Unless Holyfield lands 35 punches in the round, and he won't. He will finish this fight landing fewer punches than in any other 12-round fight of his career ever charted by CompuBox. And Larry Donald feels totally in charge. And he is. He has the right to feel in charge. Now he's fighting the fight he should fight right here. He's not trying to stand in there no more. He's using his old legs, fighting like the old Larry Donald, and that's what he should be doing. No sense in taking stupid chances. The Evanagers can't pull the trigger right now. The corner wanted bunches of punches. Evander's probably going to throw about 20 of them in the round. Ground behind the head. You're pulling him down. Let's go. If you ask if you might be looking at the last round of Evander Holyfield's career, my guess is he'll say, no, <laughs> I'm going to keep break, fighting. Break. Just a wild between, guess. I think he'll say yes. Sir. You do? Yeah. We shall see. Break, You'll break. be the one who puts the question to him, Larry. He's still one of the, great, one of the break, greatest to ever do it in my book. Well, Absolutely. how many fighters have supported the sport the way he did through hard times? I mean, Evander Holyfield emerged from the light heavyweight division to win the cruiserweight championship, then unexpectedly win the heavyweight championship of the world, and then to be the most active, the most visible, the most marketable fighter in the sport on a continuous basis over the course Ooh. of the next eight or ten years. It was a brilliant run. Yes, it was, and that was a good hook he just tried. No, let's go. He fought everybody and fought them again if he had to. Fought the biggest guys, took the biggest punches, kept coming back. Never was embittered by criticism, never fought petty wars with mass media, never ducked a hard question. He's been a man in and out of the ring. Oh, good shot. That's why you can't sit back and wait on him. <laughs> So he got in the one, but by and large, Larry Donald does what he wants through most of the 12th in sending Evander Holyfield to yet another loss, or so it appears. Given all of the fighters we have tonight, he's like a, an old Rolls Royce, 
in a used car lot full of Chevys and Fords. <laughs> And because of what he's doing to himself at the end of his career, the record looks increasingly less impressive. Yeah, not, the loss will drop it to 38, 8, and 2. Not really a numerical reflection of what this guy meant to the sport. Nothing left under the hood. You might expect Larry Donald to be celebrating wildly after what is likely to become the biggest win of his career but what you're seeing is the larry donald personality and i hope you're seeing a larry donald personality change i hope he's taking the sport more serious because he could be a, a, a person to reckon with in this division if he takes it serious and tonight he looks like he took good steps towards making himself a recognizable name and a true threat to the heavyweight division well at a moment when vitali klitschko appeared headed toward fighting monty barrett on December 11 instead of Danny Williams a lot of people thought well Barrett is a skilled boxer who could give Vitaly a lot of trouble Donald's probably a more skilled boxer than Monty Barrett he probably is because he has quicker hands well you know this fight you know is a step to become the world heavyweight champion what's that this is this is the first step to become the heavyweight champion in the world Judges for the fight. Mike Ortega of Connecticut was the referee, as you know. The judges from the fight are all from New York. Bob Gilson, Wynn Kintz, and Melvina Lathan. They've had to go deep into the judging what ranks here say? in New York with all the fights that are on this card. What do you yep. want to say that people doubted you in the past? Let me talk about it. I don't really want to say anything. Okay, I got it. I'm just trying to get something good, you know? But, you know, my thing is... And yes, we will be seeing Julie Letterman, or at least we'll be hearing her scorecard tonight, maybe, <laughs> if the next fight goes the distance. Harold beams with pride. And now Michael Buffer has the official decision on Larry Donald and Evander Holyfield. Let's go to him. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Melvina Lathan has it 119 to 109. Wynn Kent scores it 119 to 109. And Bob Gilson, 118 to 109. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Larry, the legend, Donald. The 42nd win of Larry Donald's career as a professional heavyweight. Interesting number. He now has four more wins than Evander Holyfield amassed in his career. And though, though Donald is 37 years old, Roy Jones, he just produced a performance that either tells us that Evander Holyfield has zero left or that Larry Donald still possesses enough of his natural boxing skills to perhaps be a factor in the division. I think he still possesses enough of his natural boxing skills to be a factor. At the same time, Evander is nowhere near what the real Evander used to be. So it's a mixture of both. You look at those numbers for total punches thrown. Let's go to Larry Merchant, who's standing by with Evander Holyfield. Thank you, Jim. Evander, tell us what you think of your performance tonight. Well, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I was better than the last fight. I was better than the last fight. I did improve. Uh, fought a guy that who had a style that I knew would be difficult, and uh, he proved it to be difficult, and he was able to get off, and, uh, you know, that's how it happened. Are you suggesting that you will continue to chase your dream? Uh, why not? Why not? Uh, you know, the guy, the guy um, he, he did well, and... And it's a year layoff for me, and maybe I bit off more than I can chew at that time. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy about it, and I give God the glory. You've now won two of your last nine fights. People want to know how you still believe, after losing in such a one-sided fashion, you think you can still rise to the top. I still believe that. I, I still do. 
You indicated before the fight that you would consider retiring if you lost to Larry Donald. You're now telling us you're not even considering it? Well, you know, I, I did. You know, I'm, the fight, when they raised his hand, and it was a thought, it was a reflection. It was a reflection to, you know, what happened. And I realized that, it, you know, no more than the guy, the guy, guy pointed me, the guy, hands were quick, and, I, you know, I, you know, I've seen the shots, and I've, you know, you know, he fought a good fight. What makes it so hard for you to, to give up? You know, you know, I, I don't give up on anything. It's the fact of the matter is that, you know, if I have a change of heart, I will change. But, right, you know, right now, and probably the wrong time to be asked me now at this time anyway. I, I think that, you know, in time for me, to review it, think about it, and, and pray about it. Could be something different, but you know, as as I I believe now, it's just. Thank you for everything you've given to us. Thank you. Congratulations, Jim. Jim. All right.